Hey, it's Mr. Brown. We've got one last step in Inventor for our automaton right here. So we've got our assembly, we've got all our parts. It works kind of well. It doesn't work 100% perfect, but that's fine. Uh, but our next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a drawing file for it. We're going to make a nice technical drawing. And the point of our technical drawing is it'll be used as our reference. So we're going to go back and forth to it, like while we're in the lab, while we're building it. Um, so we're going to have a good drawing of it. Uh, if we need one or two different views, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we're going to have all of our parts labeled on there, and we're going to have what's called a parts list. So it'll be, we'll show you all this in Inventor. Um, it'll be all of the parts that you need to build this and what they're made of and dimensions. So let's get going here in Inventor. So first thing is I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to New. If you're working in inches, you'll click English. If you're going to hit uh, metric, if you're in millimeters. Um, either way, you're going to go down to this drawing section and ANSI. We've got a DWG or an IDW. You can really click on either one. Um, click on the IDW um, and hit create. So IDW is an inventor drawing file. DWG is kind of like an Autodesk. So there's the other Autodesk software like AutoCAD. Um, but they will both look the same. It's just kind of how Inventor treats them things behind the scenes. All right. Um, so on our drawing here, so this is our standard engineering drawing template. You've got this little box down here. So like size D tells us the size of the paper. Uh, it's got who made it, checked by, quality assurance, manufacturer approved, a bunch of stuff that we don't really need right now. Um, if you were actually manufacturing something, you'd have a lot of information down here. We don't need that for our purpose. So we're going to delete that. That's right here, this little box up at the top. So I'm going to right click and hit delete. And I'm, let's get rid of that border that we don't need. So that border right there is this default border. So let's right click and hit delete. And let's print this out on a regular size sheet of paper. So a regular sheet of paper is 8.5 by 11. So over here under sheet one, we're going to right click and hit edit sheet. And if I go to A, size A, that brings me to an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Oh, or you could custom size if you wanted a weird size to type it in, but just A. Uh, you can leave it as landscape, you can do portrait, it depends on if yours is like a taller one, you might want a portrait. If it's wider, you might want landscape. I'm just going to do landscape. Hit OK. So now I've got 8.5 by 11. That's a sheet of paper. Now let's add our assembly. So up here under place views, I'm going to hit base, base view. If you already have your assembly open down here at the bottom, it will usually pop up in this bar right here, or it may even pop up automatically. If you don't have it open already, you might have to click this little folder, go to your OneDrive, find your project, and open it. All right. So from here, let's do at least two views. If yours is really complex, you can add more views to it. So if I do just a regular three view drawing, you know, this this right here, this view is good, but this right here doesn't really show me much. This right here doesn't really show me much. So for this instance, I'm going to do just a front view, and let's add an isometric view. So I'm going to hit that little gray triangle up in the corner, and let's bring that down. Now, I've got a lot of space on this paper. We are going to add a little chart at the top. But let's make this scale a little bit bigger. If I do half scale, is that going to fit? All right. So mine fits on this piece of paper with a half scale. If yours doesn't fit at half scale, feel free to change it. Um, maybe like a third scale or whatever. And I'm going to hit OK. All right. So when I hit OK, it's going to automatically switch to this. All right. Now, you'll notice all my hidden lines are gone. If I come back here. And I, or I get my mouse just right so I get that red box. If I double click, that brings this screen back up. Let's click on hidden line right here so I can get my hidden lines. Hit OK. Cool. So now I can see any hidden lines I might need. All right, can 
I click and drag this down. If you want to, you can also double click and turn on this shaded. And what that will do is it'll kind of fill it in. All right. All right. So let's. So we've got our part right here. We've got our assembly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to annotate up at the top. And we're going to do a couple things. One is we're going to add this parts list. And then we're also going to add some part numbers. So let's just look. When I hit this parts list, uh, do, do select view right here. So select view. I'm just going to click on view one. So select view. Click that button. Click my view here. And let's hit OK. Boop, 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 boop. Do I want to proceed? Sure. OK, let's see what happens. All right, so it gives me a little box right here. Now when I click and put it down, I see, hey, here's my, all my parts that I have. Here are how many there are. So let's zoom in here. All right, so item number. So it's going to automatically number each one of your parts. So my box is part number one. My axle is part number two. Cam is part number three. Follower is four. Hand is five. You can also see quantity. In my assembly, I have one of each of these. I have two of each of those. Part number. So it says box, main axle, cam, follower, hand. This will be whatever you named it. So along the way, we've talked about naming things what they actually are. Now, I've also seen the way you all name things, and you just kind of type stuff or put some random letters there or try to be funny with it. But this is where it really needs to have something that makes sense. Then we see this last one over here that says description. So this is where we're going to type out what the part is, like what it's made out of, the material, um, the size of material. So like if it's made out of plywood, so like here's a piece of plywood. Well, this one right here is 3 eighths of an inch. This one right here is 3 quarters of an inch. So there's a big difference between the thickness of those two. For dowels, for like the follower, the shaft, here's a quarter inch dowel. Here's a half inch dowel. They're very different, and we need to know which one's which. So we're going to put that in the description here. Okay. Now to do that, Let's see here. Let's go back to our assembly and let's take a look at something. So let's look at this hand first. All right. Save reminder. Always save your work. So looking at this hand right here. So this hand, you can make it out of wood. You can make it 3D printed. Let's say we're going to 3D print it. All right. So I'm going to click on that to select it. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go down to eye properties. So this eye properties down here at the bottom or if you right click over here, eye properties right there, or even if you have the part itself open, doo -doo -doo, I just opened it. Um, let's see here. Up here, right click, eye properties. So that's three different places to find the same thing. So let's go back here, eye properties. Now this, I find a lot of information about this file and this part. So not only does it tell me where exactly on the computer it's saved, the size of the file, when it was last created, the name of the file, but if I look at these other tabs up here at the top, I've got summary, your name or possibly your ID number is probably here in author automatically. So it knows that, hey, I made this file. Go to project. Here's where a bunch of information is. So part number is hand. So if you called it like thingamajig or whatever, you know, or you just start typing stuff when you saved it, this is where that is. If you need to change that, this is where I would come in and say hand. Uh, description right here. I'm going to say this is 3D printed. All right. And if you want, you could put a cost in there. Um, you can leave the rest of it blank. But this is where you can find out a lot of information about your parts. Um, looking at some of these other ones, stock number, status, work in progress. So this is all, again, like real engineers. If someone was making this, it would say, oh, well, it's still a work in progress. Or, hey, it's good. It's ready to go. Custom, if you wanted to add any of your own fields to it, like color or whatever. 
save, I don't know what that does, save preview picture. A current, this talks about uh, if it's visible, things like that, where it is in relation to the 3D space, and physical. So physical you might actually need to use from time to time in the future. Um, if I hit update, what it's going to do is it's going to then go through and figure out all of the math and physics behind everything. So it knows exactly where my center of gravity is. It knows the exact, um, you know, physical properties, the mass, the area, the volume. If you ever needed any of that information, that's all here under I properties. All right. But what we care about for this project right here is this part number and description. So part number, you're going to put what it is, follower, cam, box, hand, uh, dragon flapping his wings, whatever it is. Description right here is where I'm going to put, I'm going to type in 3D printed to let me know what it is, how I'm making it, what the material is. And I'm going to hit apply. All right. So now if I go back to my drawing, it says, hey, do we need to update stuff? Sure, hit OK. And I can see right here, this hand is 3D printed. Excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through all of our parts, and we're going to fill in that description right there. What we're going to list is, if it is a dowel, you're going to write dowel, and you're going to put the diameter of that dowel, so whether it's quarter inch, half inch, three quarters of an inch, whatever it is. If it is a sheet good, like plywood, MDF, you're going to write what it is, plywood, MDF, acrylic. You're also going to put the thickness, so this I would put three eighths of an inch, or three quarters of an inch, or half an inch, whatever yours is. And then I'm also going to put the overall size of it. So, you know, I need, this is going to help us figure out what we need. So I'm going to go through that right here, and I'm going to go through my one, two, three, four, five parts, my four other parts, and fill out that description. So I'm going to go back to my assembly. Let's go to my box. I'm going to go down to I properties. I'm going to go to project. This is my box, and I'm going to say plywood one quarter inch by uh, six inches by six inches, whatever yours is. All right, hit apply, close. So now again, when I go back to here, I see, hey, my box plywood is that one. So go through all of your pieces. So like my follower, project follower this is one quarter inch by if you need to know the size so let's let's just leave that blank so let's say this follower right here I'm gonna open that up we need to know how long this is and our diameter so two things one is I can look at the sketch I made so let's look at my sketch I know that that is a quarter inch diameter, so that's my diameter. My length, I can double click on my extrusion, and I know I've extruded it six inches, so I'm going to write it is a quarter inch diameter, six inches dowel. So right here, I can just right click. camera keeps switching there. I have the numbers assigned to the different cameras, so when I put in numbers, that's why it's switching. All right. Close. All right. What else do I need? I need my right here. So let's open up this one. So that one I know I made a half inch, I believe. Let's just look. So half inch.
eight inches. So, so right here, I called this main axle, but this is really a shaft. So I'm going to change that to shaft. My description: dowel, one half inch by eight inches. Apply. What else do I need? So I need my cam. All right, let's go back to my cam. So I know I made this 3 quarter inches wide. And what is my diameter of that? So that's a 2 inch diameter, 3 quarter inches wide. And this one will be plywood. So I property, cam, plywood, three quarter inch by two inch. And let's just put by two inch. So let's just pretend it's a two by two square because you're going to need that material. All right, so now when I go back to my drawing, I can see here I've got all of my parts, how many, what it's made out of. All right, now one last step, two last steps. One is we always want to put our name on it. I didn't put my name on it. Hit the text button, click up here. I'm going to put my name. I'm going to put uh, hand waving automaton. And might as well put the date. It is what, April ish? April 2022. All right, and period, let's say we're period nine. Sure. All right, so I got my name, I got my theme, I got my everything I need right there. All right, one more thing we're going to add up here. It says balloon. So what this is is we're going to label the parts on our drawing. So you can just kind of individually click on something. So click on balloon, click on this and then hit enter. So that says, hey, part number five. So I know, hey, part number five, I got two of those. That's the hey, and that's 3D printed. So you, if you only have like one or two parts, you can just do that manually. But if I hit auto balloon down here, all right, so like before, select view set. I'm going to click that button. I'm going to select this view right here. I'm going to hit uh, Add or Remove Components. Do, do, do. do I need to click on all of my parts? All right, let's just click on all of our parts. Ignore multiple instances. I'm going to say no, because I don't want to ignore multiple instances. Select Placement. So select Placement right here. If I just hit this button right here, you can see all of my parts are going to be all labeled in a row right there. If I hit around, it's going to be kind of all around the object. Vertical is going to be kind of all vertical right there. Whatever kind of makes most sense with your project right here. So I'm going to hit around and try to just adjust my mouse so I can see it. Now that looks kind of weird because I've got arrows going everywhere. Maybe switch that. Let's try that. All right, I'm going to hit apply. So now I can see all of my parts are numbered. They've got the chart that goes with it. And if I need to, I don't want all these things crossing each other like that. So I'm going to just grab this and move it if I need to. So the auto is nice but it's not perfect. So we might want to just move some of these things, make it a little bit clearer as to what is what. But I want all of my parts labeled. All right, so something like that. All right, so this looks pretty good. I've got my name on it. I've got my parts list right here. I've got how many I need. I've got all the materials are made out of, and I've got a couple different views. So ideally, you should be able to hand this drawing to somebody, and they should be able to make whatever it is they're making. All right. 
So this part, you're going to export this right here as a PDF and attach that to Schoology. So file, export, PDF, and then find your OneDrive, find whatever you're saving it. I'm going to put Mr. Brown's Automaton Drawing. Give it a name that makes sense. I'm going to hit save. All right. And then that is what you will attach to Schoology.